super fast summary of what you'll learn in this video. Hi folks, playing blues is great. Playing rhythm guitar is great. Playing blues rhythm guitar, that's the bomb. So here's three awesome guitar styles for blues rhythm guitar, as there are many ways to do it. Let's start with number one. By the way, I also wrote a very cool walking bass uh, blues guitar style, but it was too long to incorporate into this lesson, so I'll make a separate video for that one. So make sure to subscribe if you're interested in walking bass. You will see that video on my channel soon. So here we have a basic shuffle in the key of E with a nice pattern going on. The tabs for all of this are downloadable at my Patreon page as well as the backing tracks. So let's start. We start in the key of E, so we play an E7 chord with on top the minor 7 interval. So we play fret 2 on the D string, fret 1 on the G string, and fret 3 on the B string. So this is our E7 chord. Root, 3rd, and minor 7th interval. So we play it twice, and the first one is a bit staccato. So we get this nice punctuated staccato sounding chord, so we hear every chord clearly. The way you do it is slightly lifting the fingers of the string after you played it, or you can mute it with your right hand. Or a combination of both, of course. Followed by fret 2 on the B string. So from the minor 7 interval, we go to the major 6th. Followed by an open B string. So now we have a regular E chord. And then we do a little hammer-on trick on the G string from open to fret 1. So from the minor to the major, commonly seen in the blues. Followed by the B string open. So that's our first pattern. And we play that four times. But then the fourth time, just before we go to that four chord, which is an A7 in the key of E, we jump to an E diminished chord, or you can see it as an A7 as well, because they share some notes. It's five, six, and five on the D, G, and B string. So we end up with this. Playing A as a root note, it's A7 but it's with an E as root note. So we got E diminished. So then we go to the fifth bar, which starts on A7, and we basically play exactly the same pattern, but then five frets higher. So seven, six, and eight. And the chord we play right now is an A7. Again, the root, the third, and a minor seven. So we're not playing the fifth. That's good because the fifth is a pretty useless interval anyways. It's only useful for rock and power chords. <laughs> Joking aside, if you need to leave one out, the obvious choice is to leave out the fifth. So seven, six, and eight. So it's the same pattern, and then again followed by the hammer on. Now from five to six on the G string, followed by fret five on the B string. So it's a little more tricky because we're not playing it with the open strings, but just use your index finger as a bar. And then we continue. And now we end this A pattern with an E flat 7 chord. 6, 5, and 6 on the A, the D, and the G string. Because this chord resolves beautifully back to the E7 chord we started with. So from the A. And 
and then back to E7 again. So, and by the way, you can also play this with your fingers if you like. And then you can even add the root note, uh, another root note, like the low E string. Or not, just play the three strings with your thumb, index, and a middle. Okay, great. So we play it two times again, the E. But the second time is like this. Followed by a quick B7 or B major chord right over here. Nine, eight, and seven from the D string down. Just because we need to go to that B chord. So if you're all the way over here and you need to change to here, this is a nice sort of transitioning chord. So we make sure we are already at this spot before we play the B7. So, and then the first beat of the ninth bar. So the B7, the first chord of the turnaround. Nine on the D string, eight on the G string, for 10 on the B string. Same pattern as we played before, but now the fourth note is again with the pinky. And then we slide back to the A chord and we do the same. And then comes the final two bars, E major, the low part of the chord, and then the high part. Doesn't really matter what you do precise, as long as it sounds like this. And then the cool down descending run. E7 chord, 4, 3, and 4 on the G, B, and E string. You slide it one string down, but then you remove your pinky, so an open E string. 3, 2, 0. 2, 1, 2. And then you do the trill on the G string. So from open to fret 1. Low E string, C7. 3, 2, and 3, and then you slide back to 2, 1, and 2, the B7 chord, the last chord of this blues. So the turnaround quickly, B7, and then you start over. Cool, so we're going pretty quickly, but we need to go quickly because we need to cover three blues rhythms. Um, if it's too fast for you, make sure to head out to my Patreon page where you can download each of these examples as a tab so you can read along more easily. Move on to number two, a blues in A. Alright, so this is another great one, but now we're in the key of A. So the chords in the key of A are A, the 1 chord, the D, the 4 chord, and the E, the 5 chord. We start on the A, fret 5, and fret 7 on the E and the A string, and we play it twice. Just the power chord, the 1 and the 5th. And now we do the embellishment, and the embellishment keeps on being the same, so don't worry. Fret 7, 7, and 7, a bar chord on the D, G, and B strings. So our ring finger is playing those simultaneously. So you may think this is a D chord, and it is a D chord, but we play it really quickly, so it's just, you can see it as an embellishment of the A7 chord. Because after this, rather quickly, we go to fret five, five, and five on the same three strings. So D, G, and B strings. So now we got a C chord. Hmm, D, C, but the C chord, right after we play it, we do a hammer-on with our middle finger on the third string, making it an A7 chord. Pretty cool, because if you play the A as a root note, we got an A7 chord. So all these embellishments are pretty cool. So twice, and it happens pretty quickly, down and up. And make sure you don't hit the other strings 
or you can hit them but you have to mute them with the left hand so for instance when I'm playing the D chord the lowest string is muted by my ring finger when I'm playing the C chord over here again the index finger I'm muting it with my index finger and then a quick hammer on and then we go back to the A power chord and we make it a shuffle from the 5th to the 6th over here a commonly seen thing in playing blues rhythms and that is the entire bar and we play that four times very cool so now you expect of course the D chord you can play the same exact thing but then five frets up but we're not doing that we're just moving one string down to fret 5 and 7 on the A and the D string twice the power chord again and now we have to make sure we don't hit the low E string right so mute it with the tip of your index finger and now you go to the bottom three strings or the top three strings depends on how you look at it 7 7 and 7 followed by fret 5 and 5 and 5 so that's the thing we play at the D chord, so the four chord. So we play it twice, but at the last beat of the D chord, so the second time we play D, we quickly play uh, an A or G sharp seven chord over here, um, which is basically a tritone substitution for the D seven chord see it's basically the same notes it's 5 4 and 5 is the D7 but if we just remove the fret 5 on the A string and make it fret 4 on the E string we get G sharp 7 and this resolves beautifully to the A again so it's just in front of and then we go back to the A chord and we play the A chord twice again So the entire part from D. Very nice. Now we go to the five chord, which is the E, of course, over here. And now a little embellishment. In the shape of an E7 chord, a very basic seven, starting on the A string, which is the E, the root note, the third, and the minor 7 in the fall, so the basic shape of an E7 and a fret 5 on the B string and you play it like this so we do a little bit sliding actions so on the A string we slide into the 7 and then the index finger slides up to fret 5 on the B string just to make it a little more lively and then we end on fret 7 on the G string And then we play the D chord and then we do the same but we end differently so 5 4 and 5 on the A D and G string and then we slide our pinky down to fret 4 but after we hit the string so we get a nice nice little grace note which I made a video about in total so followed by 2 on the G string and 4 on the D string so that outlines a D7 chord. Okay, very nice. So and then we go to the A chord and we start the ascending uh, movement of the, the notes. We play a power chord. So we keep on playing the fret 7 on the D string but we play fret 5 and 7 on the E and the A string with it followed by fret 4 on the A string along with the pinky on fret 7 on the D string to fret 5 on the A string to fret 6 on the A string so combine that with the fret 7 on the D string and then we do fret 5 and 5 on the D and G string hammer on from 5 to 6 
on the G string, fret 7 on the A string, so basically an A7 inversion, and then so F7 to E7. Root note and back to the chord. So the ending. time and that's the entire part let me play it one time in total get the idea. Pretty cool thing, now we go to a very cool Texas Blues in the key of E. Yeah, so as you can hear, a very Texas-inspired blues, if you know what I mean. So it's in the key of E, and it's a typical shuffle. We start with a low E string, followed by the top strings. So, followed by fret 3 and 4 on the low E string. And make sure we do the down, up, down, up, down, up at all times, okay? So you have to play this a little bit like, like a boss. Fret 3 and 4 on the low E string, but just hit a few other strings with it, because you need to dig in the strings. So muting is very essential for this exercise. My index finger is just laying on the strings, making sure we don't hear strings we don't want to hear with it, so we get a nice clean sound. Okay. Followed by fret 2 on the A string. And then we do a muted string, upstroke. Followed by fret 4 on the A string. And followed by fret 2 on the D string. So that's the first bar. And I do a quick vibrato on that E note. Just to give it some life and some sparkle and some... So... And then we do the same, E and E, 3 and 4 on the E string, a muted note, and then fret 2 on the D string, which is one beat, so it's longer than the first part. So bar 1 and 2 in total. So then we re repeat bar 1, and then the fourth bar is like this, E, and then E again. Followed by fret 2 on the E string, fret 3 on the E string, and fret 4 on the E string. And muted notes in between. So we walk up chromatically from E, skipping the F, but then from F sharp to G to G sharp. Guess where we're going? To A, indeed. That's our landing point, because the E, the A is the 4 chord in the key of E. Okay, then we land on the A. So I'm playing an A power chord, just two and two on the D string and an open A string, followed by some high notes. I'm playing the top two strings open, three and four on the A string. So we play exactly the same pattern, but then just one string down. Again, the A high note, three and four on the A string again, followed by fret two on the D string, muted note again. And then 
two again, and again with the vibrato, but at this point you're doing a trill. So very quickly from open G string to fret two on the G string. So the A in total. And then we go to E again. So very nice. The trill is, is quickly to do it super fast and clean. Just try to pick up the pace, practice it without the pattern, and then try to implement it in the pattern. So we go back to E and we play the same as the first two bars. And now we go to the turnaround, which starts at the B, of course. But now I made a little lead part in between the chords that fits the Texas style pretty good, if you ask me. So the one starts on the B, one, just one beat of a B power chord, two and four on the A and the D string. Then we slide up to fret eight on the G string, fret seven and seven on the B and the E string. So just this is just a B major chord, followed by fret 10 and seven on the B string, and fret nine on the E string. And this is played in triplets, so three notes per beat. Two, three, and then four is a chromatic line down on the E string. Nine, eight, seven, six. So from C sharp, C, B, A sharp, to A, because we're going to A. B chord, one bar. One, two, three, four. Landing on the A on the first beat of the 10th bar, playing twice, fret 5 and 5 on the B and the E string, followed by a bend on the G string, fret 7, and again twice, fret 5 and 5 on the B and the E string, fret 8 on the B string, fret 5 on the B string, 8 and 7 on the G string, uh, and then sliding up from 5 to 6 on the G string. 7 and 7 on the A and the, excuse me, 7 and 7 on the D and the A string. So slowly from the A chord. And uh, make sure you check the fingering I use. Playing the low E string followed by the top two strings. Slide up from fret three and two to fret four and three. Typical Texas style. Sliding down to fret two on the G string. Pull off to an open G string, fret two on the D string. Open E string, top two strings open, A, B flat, B, the last part, A, uh, open A string, fret 1 on the A string, fret 2 on the A string, and fret 2 on the A string is a B7 chord, 2, 1 and 2, maybe add an open B string and fret 2 on the E string, B7, so in total, here we go. Or something like that. That's the lesson. These are the three commonly, typically seen blues rhythmic guitar styles. Okay, this was Paul. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And again, the tabs and backing tracks are available on my Patreon page, so make sure to check it out. And leave a like, a comment, or a thumbs up. That means a lot. Honestly, I really enjoy seeing those. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. This was Paul. Bye.